So what do you do when your kid has a science Olympiad competition in Lafayette, Indiana, and you have a whole bunch of time to kill? Well, the answer to that is easy. You go to Smith's Coins. Watch to the end. You won't believe what I picked up this time. Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment. Hey, this is a really neat shop. It's a father-daughter operation whose your hospitality is alive and well here. Hey, I really enjoy this coin shop, and if you like coin shop videos, I make a bunch of them. Be sure to subscribe, and if you appreciate the effort, hit that like button. And while you're at it, you might as well also hit that bell notification to be alerted for new videos. Enjoy. Okay, hey, Shell, thanks for coming back on my show. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Glad to be back. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, hey, so how's business been lately? Uh, what are people buying? Still buying a lot of silver, uh -huh. um, gold here and there. 90% is still hot, just like it has been. Um, now, towards the end of last week, when, when we woke up to uh, the overseas fun, uh -huh. uh, we watched metals shoot up overnight, and then they've since dropped back and you know kind of settled out a little bit. So that, you know, that, was, that was kind of entertaining for a few hours there. Yeah, I did see it shoot up. Uh, guys are making videos left and right. Um, and I, I am curious, you've been at this uh, business quite a while, and historically, whether it's Gulf War or Afghanistan or, uh, you know, what is silver and gold? What are the precious metals historically have they done? What are they supposed to be doing right now? They tend to go up when, when people are concerned. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I think that's why they went up over on the on you know on the overnight markets, and then you know when the U.S. markets opened the next day, evidently you know our our guys were a little calmer, and mm -hmm. so things kind of leveled back out. But it'll it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next few weeks, depending on you know what happens over there. Yeah, I was uh, I was a little surprised that they shot up and then just went right back down as quickly as they did. I was too, because mm -hmm. I figured they'd just keep right on going. So yes. you know I and. I have no idea why they came back down unless, you know, everybody over here has more confidence in what's going on. And because mm -hmm. I've watched it the last couple of nights, well, of course, markets are closed now, but even the next night they went up on the overseas markets and then came back down and settled. So, yeah, it's very strange. Uh, and perhaps as whatever is going to happen there continues to escalate and get worse and worse, and we see more and more terrible images on TV. Uh, perhaps uh, people will react by, you know, putting their money in safe havens, gold and silver. Well, that are the big boys are suppressing it. You know, it could be that uh, the overseas market, it goes up and then the big boys, you know, get in the next day and go, no, 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 we can't have this. Honestly, so. that did cross my mind because, yeah. you know, what it's quote unquote, you know, supposed to do is go up when there's right. world turmoil. And I, I'm a little baffled by that. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, I'm pretty concerned with what's going on over there. Oh, yeah. All the ramifications. Yep. And um, you know, I just listened to something last night where uh, you know P the folks in the Ukraine are not just going to roll over and play dead. No, they're not. No, they're not. And so this is going to be yep. a bloody, bloody world event. Yeah. And then looming. You've got China there in the background, and who are they going to back? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm afraid to see that one. Um, the other thing I think that happened with those markets is, because I, I looked at some of the stuff that was posted the next day, and the U.S. dollar was up mm -hmm. when the market started to settle back down. So the dollar had come up mm -hmm. as well, and when the dollar comes up, and things move around. and. So. It's just all so complicated, and as for me, I'll keep stacking. <laughs> exactly. Uh, preparation for oh, yeah. stuff going sideways. Oh, yeah. Um, hey, let me switch subjects. Sure. Uh, something uh, maybe a little more pleasant, maybe not. Uh, American Silver Eagles. Well, we all love them. We all, you know, everybody watching this probably has their, you know, percentage of their stack that's American Silver Eagles. I know I've got right. a ton from all over the years, literally over the decades, 
but people aren't real excited to purchase them. Are you seeing people walk in the door and buying them with these premiums? It's killing everybody. Right, and it is because um, we're having to pay so much more, you know, over spot for them than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I still have people getting them, and it's usually the ones that are completing sets or they're buying. They buy them every year for their grandkids mm -hmm. or for birthdays, and those are the ones I'm still seeing buying them. Now the other ones are coming going. That's that's too much of a premium. Yeah. And so then they just go the regular silver stuff. Yeah. The stackers are, are not buying the Eagles like right. we were before. Right. Uh, what other alternatives are they looking at uh, the if they're not buying Eagles? The generic silver rounds, um, 10 ounce silver bars. I've, I've gotten a lot of interest in the 10 ounce silver bars and the one ounce silver rounds and bars. And that tends to be what the. And then there's a lot of them that will you know, go through the 90% silver. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some of the other guys that love the old silver dollars, so they're buying those. Mm -hmm. um, so your customers, uh, what is the average, if, if you feel comfortable telling me, what does the average person spend when they walk in the door? And I'll preface it by telling you, I walked into a coin shop one time and I was him and her and looking at different stuff. I was enjoying myself looking at different things. Oh yeah. And the owner of the shop, insinuated he said something like well you know they have to make our money here and keep the lights on the average person needs to spend two hundred and fifty dollars and uh, I was a little put off by that and because I typically I go to a lot of coin shops yeah and when I step into one I'm right I'm gonna spend somewhere around a hundred bucks or so that's my budget and that's not unheard of I've got guys that will come in here you know every Friday uh -huh. and they'll buy one or two ounces of silver mm -hmm. I've got some guys that'll come in here and buy a dollar or two of 90%, you know, face value of 90%. Mm -hmm. Everybody adds up to the bottom line. It's not, you know, everybody coming in and spending a large amount of money. It's everybody spending whatever they can. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've got other ones that'll come in and buy a few wheat cents out of the bucket at, you know, 10 cents a piece. So yeah. it just, it just, it varies. Yeah, okay. It varies. Yeah, I was talking to my brother last weekend and uh, about this whole precious metals thing, uh, silver and gold, and, and encouraging him to consider. Uh, and, uh, and he thinks I'm crazy. And, you know, uh, the average person isn't aware of silver stacking and, oh, yeah. uh, and, and putting away gold. Um, anything that you can suggest to me to tell my brother, or what would you tell my brother if he was standing here, uh, that, you know, some bullet points as to why he might want to consider it? It's a great hedge against inflation. Mm -hmm. If the markets tank, you're gonna lose your investment. Mm -hmm. If you leave your dollar sit in the bank, you're not gaining anything on it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, even in a savings account right now, what's the interest rate on a savings account right now? This. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, silver and gold are great hedges against inflation. They have the same buying power today that they did, say, back in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Take a $20 gold piece in the 1800s, go to the tailor, get you a beautiful tailor-made suit. Mm -hmm. You can come in today, sell that same $20 gold piece, and take that cash and go buy that same beautiful tailor-made suit. So it's a wonderful hedge against inflation. It, it retains its buying power. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some people are, you know, I'm starting to see more and more articles about the, uh, the bubble that is our economy and the money printing and you know, the natural cycles up and down and you know I, I think it's a great idea even if it's just a small portion of your portfolio right. uh, to put away in something that yep. is actually tangible and not just an electronic number on your computer screen. Exactly. exactly. Hey, uh, you mentioned to me on Facebook that you went to a coin show recently. How'd it go? We had a lot of traffic in. our. I stayed busy at our table all day. Plus you have steady customers coming in here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They keep us busy in here and online. So. Yeah. And you do sell online? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, mainly our collectible coins. I don't put any of the bullion and stuff online because by the time you pay fees and ship it, nobody mm. wants to pay the shipping. Right. So, you know, okay. it's, it's well, definitely, easier for them to walk in the door. So I'll definitely put your uh, website uh, down in the description of this video. Appreciate so, that. And uh, yeah, on our main website, there's a link to our online store. There's a big gold button in the middle of the screen. They can click it and go to the online store for the collectible stuff. I think most of us are silver stackers that uh, watch my uh, channel. But we all have a collector, you know, a little spot in our heart for the collector stuff. Absolutely. I like old stuff. Some guys like new stuff. But yep. I like the old stuff personally oh, yeah. and uh, oh, yeah. interesting finds. Now, speaking of interesting finds, 
Uh, I'm going to peruse your store here. Absolutely. And look at, uh, for something that catches my eye. Perfect. Love to have you take a look around and see what you find. Hey, thanks for the time, Shell. Thank you, T. Have a great day. Okay, hey, this is the part of the video where I show you what I picked up. And my youngest daughter is going to have her confirmation this spring. So there you go. Check this out. I'm not real familiar. It, has, it looks like a generic Libertad copy round. Cool nonetheless. So I picked it up. And it doesn't get much cooler than Pancho Villa. And uh, what a cool thing to find in the, in the rounds, in the generic rounds bin. And to top that off, you've got Emiliano Zapata. How cool. Now, this is one of the reasons I love coming to coin shops. You never know what the heck you're going to find. Check out this two-ouncer from Mexico. It was part of uh, some sort of seafood processing plant. God knows where it came from, but is it awesome or what?